Hello and welcome to Happily Married After. I'm Mary Bernard. Just a quick reminder, please press that subscribe button, leave a comment, leave um, a thumbs up. I'm glad you're here with me. So I wanted to review the very first movie of the Christmas season of 2022. It's the very first Countdown to Christmas movie on the Hallmark Channel. Noel Next Door premiered October 21st, 2022. It's about a hardworking single mom who gets into a war of words with a neighbor who she feels is ruining Christmas, only to find out that this misunderstood grouch just may steal her heart. It stars Natalie Hall and Corey Sevier. Okay, so I give Noel Next Door, a solid seven. It does a few things well, but there are a few misses too. And I'll explain. I'll, I'll go into why I chose to give it a seven. First of all, it is not a Hallmark original movie. And it is based on a book, I believe. I have not read the book. Um, but it's not a Hallmark original. And I think that that kind of comes through. And I'll tell you more about what I mean as we as we get into it. But first, let's talk about what the movie does well. First of all, it feels very Christmassy. The sets are beautiful. There are Christmas decorations everywhere. Every wall of every house, every mantle, every doorway, um, every column outside. There, It is beautiful. And there are Christmas decorations everywhere. It's very Christmassy. It's set in Chicago. So it feels very cold and there's snow everywhere. They did a great job of that. The lead actors are fantastic. Um, Natalie Hall was a ton of fun to watch. She has a very um, uh, easy going, um, kind of a playful um, air about her. She and Corey Sevier have great chemistry together and um, they were just, they were, it, it, they were a lot of fun. They were very believable as a couple, and I really, um, I really liked watching them. You know, the overall premise of the movie is great as well. I love the grouchy neighbor kind of enemies to lovers trope, and I love the misunderstanding. You know, they are together, but they don't know that they don't like each other <laughs> behind the scenes, and they don't, you know, the mistaken identity and all of that. So, in that regard, I felt like it was a solid premise, and um, that really probably, you know, those, those positive qualities kept the movie going when the other negative things I didn't like so much um, could have really derailed it. Okay, so let's talk about those things now. Um, first of all, I felt like the script did Corey Sevier a disservice, and... I, to me, he just wasn't as believable when he was Scrooge, Jeremy. Um, it felt a little uncomfortable, to be honest. I don't know if that was the script or that his acting, but I love watching him. And the movies that I've watched him in, he's, he's a great guy. You know, he's the nice guy. And um, I don't know. It just, it felt a little off to me. And then... For what made him upset, I felt like his uh, ire and his reaction was not proportionate to what set him off. So the main thing that happens first and kind of gets everything going is um, Noel's child kicking a soccer ball against the exterior wall of his condo. Maybe it's because I'm a parent, but I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> really? You're going to get that? Out of the sh been out of shape over a ball. Um, so to me, I, that just didn't work. Um, it didn't, it wasn't a believable response. And then when he did respond and he, and he switched, you know, he would switch so quickly from this um, Scrooge guy to this like soft, nice guy, you know, um, like when he would, when he met Noel for the first time. Um, and again, people that I've known that have been Scrooges or kind of mean or kind of cranky, they're kind of that way all the time, you know? 
I don't know, but that's that's my take on his character development and um, what they did, you know, with that. Um, okay, and then the other things are um, <clears throat> there's just some things about this movie. And remember, it kicked off Hallmark's Countdown to Christmas, but it's not Hallmarky. Um, so I've always heard, you know, that Hallmark is tends to shy from shy away from stories that, you know, um, have too much, you know, negativity or suffering in them. So, for example, you know, the heroine and the hero are typically you know they are not divorced um or had some kind of horrible you know broken marriage type event they they may be widowed okay um they have a tendency not to focus on you know horrible you know suffering and in their past and things like that so, and I mean, those things can be maybe in their backstory, but they are like not a focal point of the movie where we are right now. Okay. And that's kind of been, again, my understanding as to what the, um, the storylines and the plots entail to be a Hallmark story, Hallmark movie. Well, this movie kind of, you know, gets rid of all that. Um, it opens with Noelle, who is a divorced mom, divorced single mom. Uh, she is talking to her nasty ex-husband on the phone, who apparently has thrown her out of their house, and he won't send her money. Um, so, you know, she's, I mean, that's not, you know, that's not a Hallmark plot. And then um, she refers to his his new fiance as his mistress. So the implication there is that, you know, he had an affair and the marriage broke up. So there's infidelity, there's pain, there's loss, there's, you know, brokenness. Um, that's just not super hallmarky. It feel and you know it it actually felt a little. Um, uh, uncomfortable. Um, and then for Jeremy, he has suffered a debilitating stroke and he has lost his wife. And so he's had a lot of, there's a lot of heaviness and a lot of suffering in his story too. And he's dealing with the effects of the stroke. Um, so I don't know. I'm just, it's just, it feels like there's just a lot of heaviness um in their stories and that they are actually in the movie so that's different i think for hallmark and different for me as a viewer so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce a segment called did you notice and these are just some fun little quirky things that i picked up in the movie that um you know maybe bug me a little bit or um are an interesting tidbit okay so the first one is, did you notice Jeremy's hair? So Jeremy's hair shifts between um, his Scrooge character and his nice character. So here's what I mean. Um, I noticed that when he was the mean, angry Scrooge Jeremy, his hair had a really uh, severe part and a severe kind of comb every here in place. You know, um, he looked and frankly, he, you know, he looked his he looked mean <laughs> and mad. <clears throat> but <clears throat> when he was nice, Jeremy, excuse me, his hair was softer. His whole face was softer. There was a, a flow. Um, <clears throat> and then he also wore these sweaters that, um, I mean, they're nice sweaters. And I think on a on a certain character they would look different, but, um, when he wore them as Scrooge, um, it, it, it kind of conveyed the, the anger. So yeah, so kudos to style and hair, styling hair wardrobe. Um, I feel like y'all did a great job 
um, communicating his personality and his mood through his appearance. Did you notice that Noel is a diner waitress? Now, this diner, from what we see, um, is not very big. And so maybe there's, you know, 10 or 12 tables, tops. I don't know. It's a small diner and it's a diner. There's not, you know, there's not going to be um, big ticket items on that menu, right? Yet, um, she, that's her job. And somehow she is living in this brand new, beautiful, at least two story condo. Uh, beautifully appointed, gorgeous furniture, lots of decorations, but she's a diner waitress and she's recently divorced and her husband won't give her any money. There was also a KitchenAid stand mixer in her kitchen. Those things ain't cheap, people. I'm just saying, this is not very believable um, at all, in my opinion. And, um, you know, you could have given her, she could have been the owner of the diner you know, or some type of cafe or even a, a, you know, a little bit more upscale bistro or something to make it just a little bit more believable that she could actually afford all the furnishings and items that, you know, she was, where she was living. I, I just felt like there was, that was a real mess right there. Very incongruent to me. To the point that I was distracted by it, honestly. Um, and then <clears throat> did you notice how people always um, walk around in the cold without a hat and with their coats unbuttoned and unzipped? And that just, it's in every Hallmark movie practically, but it drives me bonkers because it's supposed to be, you know, below freezing and people are walking around like um, they aren't cold. And it's just, again, it's one of those things that distracts me because it, it feels inconsistent. So those were the, the, the things that I noticed. What did you notice um, in Noel Next Door? Okay, so the last segment that I'm going to um, go through is called It's a Christmas Movie, or is it? So these feel-good Christmas movies that air on Hallmark and Lifetime and Great American Family and other other stations, other channels, they all have kind of a, um, a list of things that are featured prominently in the movies that make them the charming, feel-good Christmas movies. And they are predictable, and they are warm and cozy, and that's why we love them. So what I want to do is I've, I've pulled out a list of 10 things and I want to go through and see which ones were featured in Noel Next Door. Let's just see, is it a Christmas movie? Really? How Christmassy is it? Okay, so first on the list is a holiday inspired name. Yes, absolutely. Noel is the main character and as Jeremy points out, Noel is French for Christmas. Drinking hot cocoa. Yes, the two characters do have a drink of hot cocoa on Christmas morning. Um, snow. Yes, there's snow everywhere. It's Chicago, and every exterior shot has lots and lots of snow featured. A very special ornament or gift. No, there is not anything like that in this. Um, there's not really any threads of sentiment, sentimentality around an ornament or a gift in this. Choosing the perfect Christmas tree. No, they, they do not do that. Um, there is some tree trimming here and there and some decorating, but not uh, choosing the perfect tree. Christmas sweaters. No, no one wears a Christmas sweater. Uh, Noelle and her son do wear Christmas pajamas. On Christmas morning. A misunderstanding. Absolutely. That's the entire premise of the movie. So yay. That made the list. 
The big misunderstanding is that um, they were really mad at each other, but they don't really know the true identity of the other. And um, they also really like each other. So huge misunderstanding. A weather event causing a delay. No, there's not anything like that in this movie. There is no mistletoe. And no, there is not a small town setting. This is probably, for me, like one of the main points of a Christmas movie that I love. Small town setting. No. They are in Chicago. Um, and it's, I mean, the you know, their little condo neighborhood, um, I guess, is, is supposed to be kind of a small town, if you will. But no, there is no charm of the small town setting. Okay, so um, of the 10 traits of a Christmas movie, Noel Next Door only has four, four of 10. I honestly think that that is uh, one of the main reasons why it didn't, it, di it didn't quite make it for me. If it had just had one or two more, um, it would have felt more like a, a, an authentic Hallmark. Christmas movie. So anyway, that's my review of Noel Next Door. I would watch it again, but I probably won't set my DVR or go out of the way to not miss it. Thanks for watching. I'll have more reviews to come when we can watch all of our favorite Christmas movie characters live happily, merry after. See you next time.